Hey everybody, everything new under the sun here. This is the Black & Decker conversion to 18 volt Makita battery video. I've been uh, putting this together for a long time. It's been a long time in coming. So here I'm just taking the battery apart and I'm going to get rid of the uh, NICAD that sits in it. Um, so there's just a couple of screws that you got to take out. You know, it's just on the either side uh, pulls apart. And uh, you got to do uh, a little bit of cutting to cut the uh, contacts off. But then as you can see the cells can come right off and apart. Then we'll have to, uh, of course, uh, solder on some some wires onto the uh, connector piece there. Now, for this project, I got a, a connector uh, seat off eBay, which is actually a USB you charge USB devices off your Makita batteries. But I'm just going to use it as a seat uh, for the Makita battery, and I'm going to uh, combine it with the existing battery case. You see the light on there shows that it's, it's lit up the USB stuff. And here I'm just uh, putting it, well, I'm taking it apart here because um, I need to start doing some soldering. So it's the circuit board for the USB stuff. I've um, got a couple of wires here that I'm going to uh, put together um, in parallel to uh, basically double the amperage that I can draw through them because I don't have, quite have the uh, correct size of wires for it. Um, so I put uh, two wires together, uh, two on each side. Now I had a lot of trouble with the uh, soldering. <clears throat> you can see here I did quite a bit of soldering and uh, I have a little double uh, A battery powered solder gun which was uh, just a few seconds ago in the other uh, part of the video. This is my plug-in solder gun and uh, it was absolutely not working. Um, I could not get it to melt um, the solder on the circuit board. Now the, the solder on the circuit board must be a, a high temperature solder. It's not your kind of standard solder. I could not melt it no matter what I did. I tried and tried and uh, as you'll see I finally came up with uh, another way. I basically ended up using a torch for, uh, for part of it. So here I actually got the uh, little uh, micro jet uh, torch which I'll talk about in a second in the video uh, but it worked much better. I was actually able to melt the uh, solder that was on the board, the high temp stuff. It uh, melted a little bit of the rest of the board but it didn't seem to hurt it. All right, guys, I uh, <clears throat> I could not finish the job with this guy. This is my handheld solder gun. Works off triple A's, and uh, no, works off double A's. I could not uh, <clears throat> solder this with my plug-in solder gun. It was not hot enough. For whatever reason, the solder they put on, <clears throat> on <clears throat> my plug-in solder gun wouldn't melt that either. Um, so I wanted to buy one of these, but these are $20 and I didn't have the money. Although I remembered I had one sitting in my shed, but I thought it was broken. Um, turns out it just doesn't turn on the flame by itself. If I, if I go like this, it uh, doesn't uh, light up on its own. So, uh, But if I light it with a match, it works fine. It's just a little, uh, it does a little micro jet. It's actually just got a little, uh, look at this part. It's got a little lighter in it. Um, but it's brilliant. Uh, it does a perfect job. It's great for a uh, heat shrink, and uh, when you need to solder something, it works great for that too. So I was able to really heat this up nice and hot, and uh, get it to work. I think I, I think I uh, burned a resistor or something on there, but I'm not going to use it for USB charging anyways. I just needed to get these on soldered tight. So now, now I can actually go put this together. This was, I've been waiting like three weeks to, to uh, finish this project. It's been taking forever. If I slide this on though, it actually does light up the USB. So I don't know, it could, might still charge. Maybe I didn't break it, but uh, next step is uh, to plug all this uh, back together, put the lid on it, and then uh, try and plug it into the, uh, the battery case here and see if I can get it to plug into, into my uh, Black & Decker stuff. So that's the next part of the project now that I finally got the soldering uh, piece done. So we'll go from here and see, see what I can get done. You can still see the light in there. Well, I won't be using that anymore, and that seems to plug in perfect. So now these two should be hot. Need to plug these into the uh, bottom of the battery.
Now I'm just looking to actually connect uh, the um, little uh, battery cap uh, plug thing there, the USB thing, into the uh, battery case. And so I did a lot of humming and hawing and how to how to fit this together. Um, and I ended up having to uh, cut the case uh, a little bit, but. Um, I'm just uh, checking the voltage there, making sure that the the voltage is good. First of all, I uh, I did I did solder it onto the uh, the back of it there. All right, quite a hack job putting that in. I got it soldered in. I'm gonna test it out now and see if the voltage is correct. Should be. and just over 18 volts, so that looks good. I'm actually going to try and put this into the light. No truth here, folks. No truth. Oh, it doesn't click in. Ooh, it works. Look at that. So now guys, all i got to figure out how to do is figure out how I'm going to put this on the pack. What I'll have to do is I'll have to <coughs> cut a cavity in here and stick this in it basically. Just the, uh, just the battery portion and uh, see if I can make that work. That's the next step. Got two screws on the top here. I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to try maybe epoxy here. I don't know how it's going to hold up to a lot of banging and smashing. Don't have a lot of other choices right now. I'm going to try in the machine though, see if it works. I bash this thing up a little bit. Uh, my drill is too powerful. Do not do this at home. Well, it survived that. That was awesome. It survived a good smash in the ground. <coughs> my awesome Makita DHP41Z is too much torque for this baby. Alright, next one, put that on. Fairly sturdy, it's not too floppy. Get some epoxy on there, that'll really help. Let me try this in the machine. First got my skill saw. Try it from over here. Stick it in. See how it works. Whoa. Feels pretty powerful actually. Not too bad, not too bad. Try to go again here. All with a 18 volt Makita power pack. Not too bad. Let's take it off. Let's try our schools for Sawzall. Put this guy in. There we go. Works well. Let's a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing here. Alright, got my Makita battery, black and decker sawzall, 
18 volt power. A little bit of a hack. It's not too bad though. Not too bad. I can take this off. Recharge it. I can slide it back on. This is going to be super light duty sort of work. On the other side, we're going to get it on the face of here. Ready? One more time. Got some nails there. Don't want to go through the nails. Here I am. Try this again. No problem with that. Uh, I don't. I'm not sensing any sort of heat overload coming from this. The metal isn't warm. Now maybe it will get warm if it's run a little bit longer but it's not uh, having too much trouble drawing the power no I'd say that's a success this will get me by for the light duty stuff I need it for and uh, then I just have to buy Makita batteries perfect just got two screws there I'll put some uh, epoxy up along the side to really just make it a lot more rigid <clears throat> but that's it that's my conversion 18 volt uh, Black & Decker NICAD to uh, 18 volt Lithium Ion Makita Power Pack. It ain't pretty, but it seems to work. So there it is guys, the uh, Makita sitting on the bottom, totally replaced the NICAD. And then uh, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just mixing epoxy up and I just epoxied it, I just goobered it on there as much as I could to really uh, make one solid object out of it so if it gets banged around it shouldn't be too bad. I didn't want it all uh, relying on the two screws I had in there. Alright guys, just as a sum up while I'm waiting for the epoxy, got some two-part epoxy on there right there. Just waiting for the epoxy to uh, solidify there so it really makes uh, one solid piece and uh, that'll be it for this project it was uh, if you saw the back end the uh, behind the scenes uh, videos which well, I didn't take videos of all of the behind the scenes stuff this was over three weeks of struggling the biggest problem I had was the soldering I couldn't get uh, my solder guns just with, were not the task of the solder that was on the uh, circuit board in this thing it must have been some super hard Chinese uh, solder. Uh, so once I got my little uh, butane torch, once I found it, um, I didn't want to buy another one. Once I found it and got it working, then I was able to do that and proceed here. I think this will work. Um, it's not going to be as strong or as robust as, uh, you know, a factory. <clears throat> got to turn it because it's still a little bit liquid. And I want it to kind of settle in the uh, joints there. See, it's going to make a nice, nice solid epoxy seal around, I'm hoping, around there. It's not going to be as robust as something you buy off the shelf, probably, um, but it'll, it should be pretty strong with the epoxy there, I'm thinking. But uh, that is it. That's the sum up of the video. This took a long time. I had lots of trouble. Um, one of the longer videos um, that it took, uh, one of the longer projects that I uh, took to do to actually finish this, to complete this, but it works, and I think it's going to really give me, uh, give me a lot longer lifespan with my Black & Decker tools, and I'll be able to go out now and uh, instead of spending money on <coughs> NICADs, the old NICAD battery here, I'll be able to spend money on a Makita and know that I can work with my uh, Black & Decker tool set, my drill 
my skill saw and my sawzall. So that worked out pretty well. Um, it wasn't as cheap or as easy as maybe some other people have done it. Um, but I think this will work, all things considered. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. And uh, most of my projects are like that. They don't necessarily look pretty, uh, but they work for what I need them for. So this is uh, the end of my video. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end here, I'll probably speed it up a fair bit. Um, but uh, please subscribe if you haven't. If you, if you think this is an interesting video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. And that is to sum up to my uh, how to switch a Black & Decker 18 volt 9 CAD uh, combo over to a Makita 18 volt lithium ion battery pack.